so that always stick out in my mind as far as people I've never wrestled before. Um, I, I had always hoped that I would get the opportunity to have a match with Sarah Del Rey. Um, I was not a three-way match and a tag match with her, but in the tag match, we, we were teaming together. And, you know, the three-way is different than the singles match. Um, that was always a match I wanted to have because I wanted to be able to be in there with her. I wanted to learn from her, you know, and, and kind of um, just get that experience from her and, and so forth. Um, you know, Haley Hatred and I had talked about wanting to wrestle each other years ago uh, prior to her to Japan. Um, that never came into fruition. Um, you've got people like Lou Fisto, who, you know, is a hard-hitting girl, and I think that would be, you know, a fun little match. She's a Canadian um, girl as well. Say that again? She's a Canadian girl as well. She's from uh, from Quebec. She is. Yeah. Yes. So. I actually just met her for the first time this past August. Uh, we were both on the show together in New Jersey for Indie Girls, and that was my first, um, first time meeting her. So that was cool. She's a sweet girl. Um, you know, so there's a lot of girls out there right now who I've never wrestled before that I'd love the opportunity to. I'm, I'm open to wrestling, you know, just about anybody that I haven't before, really. Um, you know, I'm very much of the belief that there's always, you know, something to be learned and there's always new things to, to be taught and so forth. And, you know, it's just, it's just always exciting and fun when you can get in there with somebody for the first time, especially if, if you seem to mesh well and, um, you know, then you end up working all together. That's that's always a really good feeling. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you, so before when we were talking about the NWA, like there are, there are some people that that you know they're of the general consensus that the NWA is not not the promotion that it used to be. Like, like, what do you think about that? Because I mean, obviously, you know, you're the you know you're the NWA World Women's Champion. Just like what what are your thoughts like when when people uh, say things like that? You know, to be honest with you, people who say that it's not the same NWA are right because it's not. And I, but to me, that's not saying anything that's not seeing the obvious. Right. Um, it's not the same NWA. Of course, it's not because it's not the same business that it was back in the NWA payday. You know, things have changed dramatically and dramatically since that. Um, whether or not they've changed for the better is a personal opinion and is something that's up for debate and constantly being debated. Um, but of course it's not the same in any way. It's not. Does that mean that it's any better or that it's any worse? That's opinion-based too, as you can say. It is different. Um, you know, the times have changed. The wrestling business has changed. The wrestling fans have changed. Everything about this business has changed um, since the era that's being referred to in a question like that. So, no, it's not the same NWA that it once was, but it is It is the NWA. It still has the lineage. It still has the history. It still has um, the prestige, you know, that's involved with it. When I tell people I'm the NWA World Women's Champion, I'm, I'm proud and I'm honored to be able to say that. Because look at the group of women that now my name is being listed among. Look at uh, the male champions, you know, throughout the years and, and the history books for the NWA. It's it's something that I still think, you know, has a lot of honor attached with it. And I think it's something, you know, that while they're not the same as they once were, I think there's a ton of potential for the NWA to grow, to, you know, get back some of its former glory, to be looked at as, wow, it's the NWA. You know, to have that same type of prestige and the marquee again, um, you know, they are in a little bit of a rebuilding process. The new owners have only been the new owners for a few months. Um, there was a lot of talk and knowledge that they were going to be the new owners, but it didn't actually officially take place until the fall of last year. So, you know, I think the, the most important thing with the NWA is time is to just give it time, um, you know, in patience, because things just don't happen overnight as much as it would be great if they could, as much as, you know, I would like to see them happen overnight. The fact is nothing does, and, and this is no exception. So I think, you know, over time, like I said, there's a ton of potential. There's, there's a lot of good things that, you know, that have happened, that could happen. So it's, it goes back to my, my favorite motto these days, if time will tell. But, you know, I I myself, I'm proud to be the champion. I'm, you know, I, I support the company.
company, and I have no reason to think that there's not exciting things ahead. So obviously, so obviously, like from what you just said, like you you can picture yourself uh, working with the NWA for for quite some time. Then, um, you know what, I, I can. Um, I, I try not to get too ahead of myself. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not somebody who who likes to sit here and say like, in a year's time, I'm going to be here or this is going to be this because. Right. You know, life is life. Things can change in the blink of an eye. Anybody ever knows what's going to happen. Um, you know, and I don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately. I can't predict the future. But currently sitting where I'm sitting right now today, um, you know, I have no reason to believe that, you know, things aren't moving in good directions. I have no reason to believe that there's not a future for the NWA and the champions of the NWA. Um, you know, and, and time will tell. But as of right now, I'm I'm very firmly on board, and I'm proud to be their champion. And I can't wait to start getting out with this title and, and going wherever I can with it to defend it. I'm excited about that, and I can't wait for it to happen. Yeah, I don't think enough of these new fans really understand the prestige of those initials, NWA. You know, like a lot of us who got to see the NWA back when it was in its heyday, and uh, especially like in the 80s, seeing guys like Sting and Ric Flair on our television. Yeah, I don't think people really understand how important that company and its lineage is, no matter who's owning it or whatever. If, if a, I thought if a person's the NWA, an, an NWA champion, that they deserve respect as a, as a wrestler. Period. Well, thank you. Yeah, and I... I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and I, I agree with it. Um, you know, I I grew up on wrestling in the 80s. That's, you know, I started wrestling, uh, watching wrestling, rather, as a kid when I was eight years old, which was 1988. So, and when I was a fan, um, I don't want to sound like, you know, fogey here, but, you know, there was no internet. It, there wasn't... Um, you know, there wasn't the access to things like there is now, but I will tell you what, when I was that little girl and wrestling, the, from the moment that I started watching wrestling, it has been like my obsession in life. That has not ever, ever changed. So even, even when I was a fan back then, I was doing everything I could to read about wrestling, to watch wrestling. And it wasn't just that current time frame I was interested in. I was wanting, you know, I dragged my parents into Suncoast video store every time we were at the mall because I wanted to see if they had any new VHS tapes in. And, um, you know, I would scoop up. I did the same thing. See how old I am? Yeah, oh, yeah, so did I. Oh, yeah, no. Every, every... I was the same age group. I did the same, I did the same thing with my mom. Yep. And... Yeah. My mom used to watch me. wrestling with me and my older friends the same way. They needed oh, they watched with you? Yeah, my mom, my mom watched with cool. me. Cool. To the point That's where even cool. now she still asks me about different wrestlers. Like, she's like, hey, Anthony, remember Coco Beware and Rashid? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, yeah, I never stopped watching. It's, yeah, I, I understand what you mean. Like, wrestling's been part of my life for just as long. My earliest, I, I got hooked the moment that I saw, when I was four years old, I saw some footage from WrestleMania 3, and I saw Hulk Hogan and Body Slam Andre the Giant, and then that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're oh, old school, too. <laughs> yeah, I totally am. I, it it you know, explains I, why you, hold on, go ahead. It, it explains what? I was going to say, it explains why um, on Valentine's Day when I sent that uh, Gorilla Monsoon Valentine on. <laughs> <laughs> you knew exactly what I was talking about. Yes, and I, I loved that. I was like, oh my gosh, that is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it just, to me, it was like, if it had anything to do with wrestling, I had to have it, you know, or, or whatever. Like, I, I remember one <laughs> my parents got to the point where they wouldn't even fight, like, they would just go into the store automatically, and you know, I would always ransack whatever they had. Like, I would pick up tapes, um, you know, that had, like, the black and white wrestling from the 1960s or 50s. And, right, yeah. Um, you know, in my book fair at my school, when I was in elementary school, one of the books that they had for sale was a book titled The Teenage Professional Wrestler. It was written by Ted Lewin, who was the brother of Mark Lewin. I, I got that book from my library when I was in eighth grade. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, I never saw him wrestling.
Yes. Well, he was so born on time, but it was wrestling, and I had to have it. And so that's how I was. I mean, any tape, any magazine, any book, all the George, uh, you know, Neapolitano books and everything, I just, I had to have anything wrestling because I was such a fan of it that I didn't care about only what was happening on my TV, you know, on Superstars and on Challenge every week. I didn't care just about that. I wanted to know every drop of anything that I could about professional wrestling. So, you know, I just think back to when I was a fan and that was what my mentality was. And I'm not sure that people, I'm not sure that fans today still, like, go way far back in the annals of time like that to learn about, you know, what it is they love so much or to know, like, you know, I, I'm not sure, and I'm sure that some people do. I'm not saying, I'm not making this huge blanket statement, but I'm not sure how much it's done at this point in time, which is interesting because you do have the things like the internet and things like that where you can just touch, you know, so many videos and photos at your fingertips. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's a different era. It's a different time frame and different generations. So it's it's hard to say, but... You might be onto something there that a lot of the younger, you know, current day fans may not be familiar with, you know, quite all of the history of the NWA or of professional wrestling in itself. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly, because it's, it's like I, I remember when I was a kid, like, you know, like getting into the old fogey talk here, like the first NWA, like, pay-per-view and like, like to me, this match is still in like my my top 10 greatest matches, matches of all time was 1990 Great American Bash when Sting won the title for the first time. You know, and I just, right. such, you know, and yeah, like, you know, like, like you guys said, like, there's so much prestige and so much history. I mean, the NWA has been around since 1948 and, um, you know, and, and yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the, the nature of the nature of the NWA, the company itself has changed, but, you know, like Anthony said as well, I mean, you know, the, those three letters, NWA, like a lot of, you know, a lot of wrestling fans, like still, you know, still consider like the NWA, like you know, a very, you know, very successful uh, promotion, so. Absolutely. I, I see both sides of the argument all over the place. Um, I see so many fans that, um, you know, just automatically say the NWA is dead, the NWA is dead. Um, I see just as many fans who want to have the counterpoint and say, no, it's not, it's just different. Or, you know, I mean, it's, it's all personal opinion and, it's, it's always hard to say what's right or what's wrong. I think the fact that, you know, I, I just want to see people care about it, and I want to see people passionate about it, and it seems like there are people out there who are. Um, you know, and like I said, I think, I think it just needs to be something that's given time. You know, it, time, time is going to tell. It, it's either going to flourish and, and do well or, or not. But I think, you know, for anyone to jump out and say, you know, this is what's going to happen, or this is how it is. I, I think it's just a little premature, and we need to just kind of give it time, cool it just a little bit, see what happens, see where things go, um, you know, and, and just kind of watch it develop and cross our fingers and hope for the best. There's not a cross fingers on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there is. You know, I'm only crossing my toes right now. <laughs> I'm about to be. I think I'm getting ready to add a finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel that the NWA is one of those, as, as long as it's been around from the heyday to the 90s when it was kind of up and down to whenever TNA wrestling joined up with them to when TNA broke, I think that it's a company that will continue to reinvent itself and move on with the times. But okay. I'm sure that there's no wrestler out there, past or present, that wouldn't mind being inducted into the NWA Hall of Fame. Right. It's still an right. honor for, and, 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 for all those guys. Right. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And, you know, I, I mean, like, like you said, I'm, I'm repeating ourselves a little bit here, but, you know, it's changed, but it's still the NWA. And so at the end of the day, it's it's still the same company, and it still means something, you know, it's, um, to, to many, many, many people. So, um, you know, I mean, it's you're, you're not going to have 100% um, 100% of the people, you know, seeing things from your point of view or agreeing with everything that happens, um, that's just not going to happen. So really the best thing you can do is just, you know, put your head down and, and charge forward and just, you know, just do the best you can and put the most things that you can and hope for the best. Of course. 
works. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that um, do you think like companies like the WWE and to a lesser extent TNA they kind of kind of muddy the waters when it comes to pro like uh, women's pro wrestling and kind of you know kind of like you know kind of what like how can I put this kind of tarnished like the image of like good like women's wrestling. Yeah, no, it's no, that's that's definitely true. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, I, yeah, I think you're right that you know companies like the WWE and TNA. I mean, they can be blamed with probably to a certain extent, but uh, I, yeah, I think it's just the just the change of the the times in general. Because I mean, like yeah, like you said, the image of the ladies. You go back to the 1980s. You had uh, wrestlers like you know Sherry Martel and Fabulous Moolah. Like you said, they wore the the conservative one piece singlets. But now we're in 2013, and you have girls that wear, you know, extremely tight tops and they wear, you know, right. they wear next to nothing, so. So they're like, you have it short cream You know, I, I, while you were talking, Richard, I was still thinking that over, and I, I really do think it's hard to pinpoint one thing or, or one time. I don't know if it's the, what the wrestlers wear. I don't know if it's how they're booked on the shows, meaning in a wrestling, um, you know, capacity versus being like a manager or a valet or something, you know, are we booking them to wrestle or are we booking them to roll around and, you know, do the brawn panty mud jello type of thing? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's so many things I think that go into it. There really are. It just seems like now, especially in WWE, there's just less of an emphasis on the women's wrestling, even though some of those girls can wrestle. I mean, I've seen it. We'll go on Twitter or Facebook during Raw, you'll see somebody post over. Oh, there's a Divas match coming on. 
time to get a bathroom break or time to go get something to eat. <laughs> that type of thing. Now, I don't do that during TNA when the knockouts are wrestling. I actually watch their matches, but I can understand with people. Like, a few weeks back during the last uh, WWE paper, who was it, uh, Elimination Chamber, they had the Divas match before they had the main event. And I said, they're putting it on before the main event because I said, this is what they used to call in the old days a beer match. Right. And it got a bunch of responses. And, it, yeah, like, <laughs> WWE really puts, like, like, with WWE matches, a lot of times it seems like there are Divas matches, you know, close your eyes and the match is over. It's like, right. you know, just get it out the way. Right. And, um, you know, that's another complaint about women's wrestling that's on TV right now as well is the amount of time that the girls are given. And, um, the fact that if you turn on the television, the likelihood of you seeing a match, um, you know, a women's match that goes longer than three or four minutes is very slim. Um, and I know that that's a major complaint among fans as well, is why aren't you giving the women more time? And I think, you know, obviously I don't know because I'm not, I'm not there and I'm not part of the, the process, but as far as the WWE goes, um, I, you know, my school of thought has always been it's, it's extremely likely that the reason for that is the fact that um, if they were to go any longer than that, it just, it would be a much worse situation than, than what it is with the three minutes they have. You know, right. like, if you have girls in the ring who can only do so much, then there's absolutely no reason for you to give them a 10-minute match. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. It makes plenty of sense. Yeah. Do you, Casey, do you think that, like, maybe the WWE and maybe, again, to a lesser extent, TNA, they tell these girls to wrestle a specific style of match? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they tell them to wrestle a specific style. Um, you know, they, they both have the agents. Both companies have the agents that work with the wrestlers and, yeah. um, you know, help, help finesse and fine-tune. But I, I honestly don't know if, if they're told to work a certain style of match. I my opinion and my thought would be that um, you know, they are encouraged and you know, I would think that they would be encouraged to wrestle a style of match that is in line with their capabilities and what they're able to do. Um, you know, for instance, you've never seen me on the top room for a reason. You know, and so I'm not going to go out there if, if I if I have a match, I'm not going to go out there and try to do something that I just, you know, have either never done or, or am not able to. Right. Um, you know, if you've got girls in the ring who either don't have the benefit of being, like, seasoned wrestlers on the indies or who haven't had a lot of training and are limited in what they do, then you have to, you know, give a match that's along those lines because otherwise... If you send somebody out there to do something that you know is not within their ability at that point in time, you're setting yourself up for, for even more failure. Right. You are setting the girls up for failure. You know they're they're going to look even they're going to look bad out there trying to you know provide you with something they're not able to provide at that point in time. So to me, it's like look if if they are if they have the ability to go out there and work a solid three minute match where it's crisp and it makes sense and you know, it, it comes off comes off looking good, then everyone should take that over a match that's given 10 minutes that ends up being a complete debacle, right. you know? Yeah. No, that's, uh, no, that's, a, that's a good it's point. It's a double-edged sword in some ways. Yeah. No, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, a very interesting perspective because I always wonder that myself because especially in the, the Divas and the WWE because I'm not sure who trains the WWE Divas now, but Fit Finley used to train them and, you know, obviously we've all seen Fit Finley in the ring and he was a hell of a worker and I'm thinking like, does Fit Finley really train these girls? Because it doesn't look like it to mm-hmm. me, so. It's like um, well, my, my understanding, what's that? I'm sorry. Like, it seems like they're only trained to do, like, a few moves and the finisher is what it all looks Yeah, looks exactly. Like. Mm-hmm. Well, um, my understanding, I think, unless I'm wrong, which is always possible, is that Sarah Del Rey is down there as the trainer right now at NXT. Yes, yeah. Um, and that's phenomenal for them. And and I think, you know, if you watch, if you watch who they hire, um, obviously they're notorious for hiring models, and that's, that, that's a complaint that you hear a lot, but... Um, you know, they do pick up girls who have been, 
you know, wrestling on the indies as well. And I would like to think that maybe they'll continue going in that direction. They'll continue doing that because, in my opinion, there's plenty of girls on the indies who are not only beautiful girls, but who, you know, are, are very solid at what they do and they're good workers and, you know, would be great additions. So my hope is that they would continue to go in that direction and do that. But, um, you know, it just, yeah, it's, it's hard to say when you see, you know, somebody with only maybe one or two things to do. It, it, it's a question of, is that because that's all they were able to, you know, pick up and to learn? Is that, you know, is that, again, what they're best at and you want to highlight? You know, I mean, you're on TV. You don't want to go out there and, and give a half ass effort, you know. You always want to highlight what everyone can do well. Um, and that goes for, you know, anything. So it's hard to say. It's hard to say why. The other thing to keep in mind is, unfortunately, the fact of the matter is, it's a TV show that has only a certain amount of time. That's right. And they have yeah. a, lot of, a lot of content that they need to squeeze into that time. So, um, you know, I mean, something's got to give somewhere, and you can't always expect everyone to get, to get longer matches. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. That you know, especially shows like Raw and and uh, Impact Wrestling, they're only they're only on for well, Raw's on three hours and Impact's on two, and they gotta fit everything in. So yeah, sometimes uh, you know, women's wrestling, you know, the Divas matches and the Knockouts matches, like they're not they're not given very much time because you know, when you're dealing with you know television, when you're dealing with you know production, and you know, that that's that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Right, certain things right. got to get pushed to the side, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you had mentioned uh, Casey. You had mentioned uh, independent uh, promotions. The, um, you've worked for uh, WSU and that sort of thing. Like, do you see yourself working for other promotions like uh, Shine and Shimmer? Um, you know, possibly. Uh, it's it's very possible. I try not to ever really rule anything out. To be honest with you, um, you know, it's. it's Honestly, my schedule is usually so full. Um, you know, I'm I'm usually pretty busy as it is, um, and I've I've not ever been in contact with with either company. To be honest with you, um, you know, I, I don't know. It's always something that may or may not happen. Like I said, I don't rule anything out. There's no reason why I would not want to work for for either company. It's just something that hasn't happened at this point in time. And uh, being a world champion, is there any possibility of maybe getting that opportunity to wrestle internationally and defend the title in some other countries? Um, I would hope so. Yeah, that's um, that's one of the things I'm hoping to see happen at some point. You know, this year with that title, I when I won the title, I really was, and I still am, excited about the prospect of really truly being able to kind of take it around and, you know, go to all of the various NWA uh, licensees and companies and, and defend it against, you know, whomever the top contender in, in each one is at that time. And that's, that holds true for both um, domestically and internationally as well. So right, I, I hope so, that, yeah. Some girls that work some different styles, you know, yeah, because different countries, they all work different styles. It's like, yeah, let's see what you do against maybe some of those uh, – Tough ladies over in Japan or some of the yeah, new over in the UK. You know, yeah, I want to see what would happen. Exactly. I, you know, it's, I, one of one of my beliefs um, that I've always held about being a wrestler is, you know, you, you constantly have to put yourself into new situations and, and new scenarios in order to continue not only to grow but to challenge yourself and to be challenged. So. Um, you know, yeah, when you're put in the ring with somebody who you've never wrestled before, who might have a completely different style than yours or a completely unorthodox style all of their own, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge. And it's one that I think is something really that everyone should strive to, um, to face at some point just because it forces you to not only grow as a wrestler but to be, you know, on your toes and, and bring your A-game every time and be at your best. So I agree. I'm all for it. I think that's an exciting prospect. And especially like when, when it comes to being aligned with the NWA because, you know, the, 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 the history and the lineage of the NWA titles, they were defended all over the world and they were, they were dropped all over the world. I mean, you had, you had, you know, NWA world champions like Antonio Inoki and Giant Baba and, then, and Flair right. were dropped. Yeah. Flair would drop the belt of those guys. Right. So, I mean, to right. me, that's, that. Like there's nothing there's nothing that aggravates me more than to say, Yeah, I'm a world champion, but it's like, okay, well, 
have you, you know, have you wrestled, you know, have you defended the title around the world? No, only North America, right. you know. Yeah, you know, right. people call themselves the world champion, but you've only defended the belt between Pittsburgh and Baltimore. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, the world between, yeah, you're, the, you're the world champion, the world between Pittsburgh and Baltimore, maybe, and not the rest of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's to me, that's that's like, there's nothing more aggravating than that. It's like, yeah, I'm a world champion. I mean, WWE is like the prime example. I mean, honestly, when can you guys think of the last time uh, the WWE title was dropped in outside of North America? That's true. Even though they've toured, they've never dropped, they haven't dropped the title outside of the country in so long. Exactly. But I mean, not, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could, you, could, you could probably go back to, <laughs> if you want to go back like 50, 60 years, then maybe, but yeah, like not in the, not in the last 30 years or so. Very valid. True. So we have uh, one question from a fan. I don't know what the hell people's problems were. They didn't want to send any questions in. Um, no. <laughs> a, yeah, I don't understand either. I, I retweeted it like 20 times. Like, come on, send her some questions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Henry West uh, says, Hello, I have a question for the NWA a World Women's Champion Casey Carlisle. Could you ask her if the NWA can change their minds and book Casey to defend her title on April 20th. <laughs> so what's that all about? I knew the question was going to be. <laughs> oh, so you know this individual? Um, I, I know of him. He Yes, I, I know of him through Facebook. Um, he is a very vocal fan, which uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with at all. Um, what he's referring to is the Parade of Champions show that NWA Houston is hosting in Houston on April the 20th. Um, it is a show that I was originally booked for, and unfortunately, due to circumstances out of my control, I am no longer booked for. Um, needless to say, that has ruffled the feathers of many fans, some of which are more vocal than others publicly. Henry is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um you know, well, uh, yeah, um, yeah, honestly, uh, yeah, I don't know why I read that, um, no, they're, they're not going to change their mind, I, I, I have had, I had a discussion at length, um, and no, that, that is not going to change that decision as far as um, I can tell I have no reason to believe that that will not change. So, unfortunately, Henry, no, I do not see that changing at all. I do not see me being part of um, that show that night. I am, however, to wrestle in West Virginia that night, so everybody can check out my schedule and come see me there. <laughs> well, and I agree with Henry that that's weak. That that's is weak, weak. yeah, that's... <laughs> That's a huge injustice. I mean, you know, what the hell do they have to do to, to get booked on a, on a show, honestly? Especially when you're a world champion, honestly. Right. Miscarriage of justice. Um, well, thank you. And to be honest with you, I am in the same boat as you guys. I'm not happy about it. Um, I wasn't, and I'm still not. Um, I, you know, I spoke to the, the appropriate people. I voiced my opinion um, and had the dialogue about it. But unfortunately, it, it is what it is. So, um it's at this point in time, it's a little bit out of my hands and, uh, you know, it's, it wasn't my decision. I'll just leave it at that. It was not my decision at all. And with that, with that wrestling fans, uh, that's going to do it for this edition of kayfabe kickout audio for March 13th, 2013. So guys, this is the part where you guys plug, literally plug the shit out of, uh, what's, what you guys are doing. We'll start with uh, with Casey first, and then we'll we'll go on to Anthony. Well, um, I invite everybody, of course, to keep up with me as much as they can online. Um, I do interact with, with everybody as much as I possibly can online. So I encourage everyone to check out my website, which is CaseyCarlisle.com, um, and that has all my upcoming appearances. It has photos and videos for matches. It has my merchandise for sale. Um you know, my Twitter feed and so forth. I am also on Twitter. It's at Casey Carlisle. And I'm also on Facebook as well. I have both a fan page that you can click like on to keep up with me or um, my regular profile page. Unfortunately, my friends list is full, but I do allow subscribers to my updates. Um, so I'm ready to keep up with me there. And, of course, my YouTube channel is under Casey Carlisle as well. So basically, if you Google my name, you should be able to find me without much trouble. Um, 
But yeah, I, I encourage everyone to please keep up with me online, see where I'm going to be. You know, um, I really actually love interacting with the fans because if there weren't fans for me to wrestle in front of, I wouldn't be wrestling. So I'm very appreciative of the fans. Um, and I invite everyone to check it out. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned Facebook there. You're gonna to have to like clean out your friends list and get rid of some of the deadbeats <laughs> that uh, get rid of some of the deadbeats that that don't talk to you and you know put me and Anthony Anthony on. So I thought that might resonate with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're supposed to have a five thousand friend limit, and um, I'm hovering around that for a long time. I woke up one morning. There had been a Facebook glitch, and I suddenly had like fifty five hundred something fan uh, friends on there. No clue how it happened, but now I can't. Um, I can't add anybody else. So um, I would slowly try to whittle away five hundred something people for you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I allow subscribers, though. See, so everyone, all my stuff's public, so you can see it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So, Anthony, it's uh, it's now your turn. So. Okay. Well, um, of course, people can see my weekly columns over at www.kfabekickout.com. I uh, write about anything and everything that's going on in the wrestling world, and people really seem to enjoy it. You can follow me on Twitter at Who's A Cox. That's uh, W-H-O-S-A-N-T-C-O-X. You can follow me there. And also, um, I do um, guest host radio show um, with Wrestling Commentary Central. You can follow them at WCC Live on Twitter. I am... Um, do, the shows that I do with them include uh, Thursdays, I do TNA Recipe, which is basically a TNA post-game show. And every week I always post up uh, the phone number that you can have so that you guys, some people can call in. We do it at around 10.30 Eastern Standard Time for everyone. So please check me out. Excellent. And just like Anthony said, you can check out his weekly columns on the official website of kfabekickout.com. That's www.kfabekickout.com is the URL. And you can check out the official Twitter account of Kfabe Kickout. That's at Kfabe underscore kickout. Check out the official fake Facebook page as well, www.facebook.com slash Kfabe Kickout. And Kfabe Kickout is on YouTube as well. So just go to YouTube and type out uh, Kfabe Kickout. So Casey and, and Anthony as well, thank you uh, so much for being on the show tonight. I uh, sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks again, wrestling fans, and I will be back with another uh, splendiferous episode of Kayfabe Kickout Audio, so have a great night. Thank you.